Service has been gaining significant traction and continuing to grow quickly. According to CNCF Cloud Native Survey China 2020, 31% organizations are using serverless in production and 41% are evaluating. However, developers are still facing some barriers when putting serverless in production, such as lack of standardization, development tooling, and difficulties to migrate into serverless. Today, we invite Jeffrey Harmon, Vice President, Principal Analyst of Forrester and Shai Chang, Staff Engineer in Alibaba Cloud Service Team to discuss serverless standardization, common serverless workloads, and general recommendation for modernizing applications with serverless technologies. How do you think about fast or serverless standardization, Jeffrey? So it's a very interesting time in this space. We've seen so much heat and light in the industry focused on containers and Kubernetes over the past 12 months. And it almost seems a serverless has been sidelined, but, but I don't think that's the case. In fact, some of the most interesting things are happening at the intersection of containers and function runtimes. One of those is certainly the steady progression of Knative and function runtimes that implement it. As a result, FAS developers can take advantage of OCI containers as a standard packaging format, but they still get the auto-scaling advantage of a FAS approach. The result is that I think it's going to become easier over time to think about portability of functions. And that's especially the case when I can package up a function runtime itself inside a container and then execute it anywhere I need to uh, across a hybrid or multi-cloud topology. Now that said, I still think that there's plenty of room for innovation in this space. Uh, some folks I talk to in the industry think that Knative is, is somewhat heavyweight and they're looking at alternative models to package, deploy and scale functions. And then you have what's going on at the edge. Uh, there we see uh, models like V8 isolates uh, and finer grain function runtimes growing in popularity. So I advise my clients to keep a close watch on the projects that are incubating at the uh, CNCF and to look at those that are able to increase the level of abstraction that developers work at. You know, I have a fear that the current model of uh, configuring and running container-based workloads is just a bit more complex than what most enterprise developers want to work at. And they really don't look forward to writing YAML all day long and worrying about control planes and networking planes. So for them, a serverless approach is really a great alternative. Okay, and do you, Shai Chong? Uh, thank you, Jeffrey, for your input. I think it aligns well with our observation. Overall, our vision of fast function as a service standardization is that in the long term, FAST will gradually embrace open, open source and cloud native standards. And, and this is what we call the cloud native FAST. In the short term, we see the standardization will start with function packaging, development tooling, problem model, and observability. Uh, there has been a long history of comparing, arguing pro and cons for serverless and containers in the community, and there are a lot of good ideas. However, we believe that containers and serverless can work together seamlessly. For example, major fast vendors have added support for container images, and there are also serverless container services offerings in addition to fast. Container images as standard packaging format will accelerate legacy application to migrate to serverless um, as majority of the container ecosystem can be reused. Another aspect of standardizing, standardizing FAST is the programming model and portability. Different vendor requires different function handler and signature, and that do create concerns for vendor locking. We believe that open standard and programming uh, interface such as HTTP uh, server-based services give benefits to micro legacy web application and the frameworks to serverless with minimum, minimum code changes and also makes it easy for runtime extension, third-party integration using a familiar approach such as webhooks. And finally, our customer find it becomes more challenging in observability when moving to serverless and wish to reuse open source cloud native tools such as Prometheus, uh, open, open tracing, open telemetry, and Grafana, or the commercial APM soft service they have already invested in. Therefore, it is important that serverless uh, observability to increase such state of art tools and to provide uni unified monitoring and operation experience when using fast other technologies at the same time. 
Okay, thank you. And what are the workloads that you have seen especially successful after serverless adoption, Jeffrey? Yeah, you know what? This has really evolved over time. Um, in the early days of serverless, we saw a lot of customer facing workloads that really benefited from auto scaling capabilities. And many of these workloads were new products, new services. So developers could start right at the beginning and use event driven patterns and asynchronous execution instead of having to retrofit that into existing applications. So in those days, the types of things that we tended to see were what I would call uh, Perl++, plus plus, uh, essentially using duct tape and using uh, a FAS to stitch together multiple cloud services and integrating them. Functions turn out to be a really good way to integrate and assemble multiple public cloud services uh, into a business process or a customer journey, especially if you're mixing core cloud services and serverless or managed services. IoT was a really good place where a serverless backend is, is well suited for the types of things that IoT services needs. Uh, examples include sporadic communication, uh, variable processing loads, and the need to scale the infrastructure to zero, especially if you don't get a lot of data overnight or on weekends. Uh, we also saw that um, early, in the early days of, of, of FAS, uh, spiky processing workloads. So where you wanted to extend current infrastructure as a service models at a smaller level of granularity. As an example, uh, during singles day, when you have to process an awful lot of orders or uh, after a holiday when everybody's registering their new products, uh, those are great places uh, for, uh, for FAS. Now, as time has evolved and as developers have become more experienced with functions and serverless concepts in general, we're seeing more types of workloads pop up. One of the most interesting ones to me is, is a domain specific extensibility model. So many platform vendors are using uh, functions to enable integration and extension of their products. So as an example, uh, GitHub Actions are based on serverless technology. Adobe's uh, uh, IO uh, APIs are based on OpenWhisk. Uh, MongoDB's Stitch product uh, uses serverless concepts. So as you see more and more headless services made available to developers, you're going to see serverless concepts uh, used to extend uh, those APIs. And then we have full-scale event-driven architectures. As more organizations are rewriting traditional workloads, uh, they're moving them to reactive models instead of imperative ones. And so as they modernize batch workloads, for example, it turns out that, that FAS is a really good way to do that uh, because you can scale out uh, to meet the needs of those, those batch workloads. Finally, as FAS models have gotten more feature-rich and we've gained the ability to better deal with longer running processes and stateful code, we're seeing even more workloads now. One of my favorites is web workloads. Uh, we're seeing a lot of standard uh, web uh, applications and frameworks being used, deployed inside containers, but then auto-scaling uh, using uh, 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 serverless technologies. Uh, video processing is an example. As you get functions that can execute for longer periods of time, and as you get support for specialized hardware, it's possible to do on the fly uh, video uh, uh, conversion and processing. And then finally, uh, artificial intelligence and natural language processing. Um, these are now made possible through the ability to process large models, access large buckets of storage, uh, NFS as an example, and get access to specialized hardware to accelerate the training of models. So we've gone from a few workloads to a lot of workloads, and I think we'll continue to see uh, the range of things that developers can do expand. And how about you, Shai Chang? Uh, so I think... Our, your observation, your observation definitely align well with ours. Our customers also find event-driven web application, video processing, machine learning, and artificial intelligence are the workload that fits, fits well uh, with serverless and fast. The use cases we would like to call out are video processing, uh, AI and machine learning, and web applications. Video processing, uh, so, the, so start with video processing, some uh, sh short running transcoding jobs and long running real time uh, live or recorded streaming uh, use cases, especially during the pandemic. Many things have gone virtual and online. Using the online uh, education as example, it fits perfectly with serverless model as many classes will only be given in certain time period, uh, for example, in the morning or in the, in the, during the night. 
and the traffic do need to scale out in, in tens of thousands of uh, compute instances for broadcasting, streaming, uh, as well as batch offline transcoding for thousands and hundreds of thousands of videos. And we also observe many AI and machine learning online inferencing success stories from our customers with container images support, larger instances, and elasticity of fast. Customers enjoy uh, the ease of ease to use time to market and cost saving. And finally, we want to discuss the legacy web applications in various frameworks uh, such as Python Django, uh, Java Spring, and uh, other uh, PHP uh, frame web frameworks also find it easy to modernize it. With standard function packaging such as Java uh, Java package and container image support, along with the standard uh, programming model such as HTTP server, developers find they can offload majority of their operation burden to fast platform, eliminate the idle resource cost uh, with only minimum code changes. Okay, and what would you recommend for customers to look for when they are considering migrating to service or fast, Jeffrey? Well. To me, I think the first thing is to make sure that you've got affinity, the kind of workload that you want to use FAS for, that you want to use serverless for, uh, matches the types of things that, that work well. Um, and then you also want to make sure that they match the specific platforms you're considering. Not every FAS platform works the same way. Now, the good news is, is that almost every large organization uh, has the types of workloads that I just talked about in some form or another. Secondly, you need to think about the development experience. What sort of tools do you want your developers uh, to use or do they want to use? Are there plugins for the IDEs that support that, that platform? Will they develop on their own machines or will they develop on the cloud platform? What DevOps tools or deployment pipelines can they use to deliver uh, functions and the functionality that they're building? Do you need more advanced features like the ability to chain together multiple functions into workflows? Do you need to deploy those functions uh, inside a virtual private cloud? If you work at an enterprise organization, the answer to that one is probably yes. Um, what kind of programming languages do you need to support? Uh, different platforms support different languages. Other things that we've looked at in our most recent Forrester wave on, on FAS platforms included observability how easy it is to understand how your functions are working at scale and get real-time data about their execution. Um, integrations, how easy it is to integrate to other cloud services and the breadth of those services. For example, it's very common to integrate to an event grid or a database uh, that supports auto-scaling functions. Security, in addition to the VPC support I mentioned above, uh, the isolation model for the function runtime and how it keeps developers and their, their services safe from attack. Finally, I think you have to consider geographic availability. In many cases, you'll want to process data in the regions where your customers live. In fact, for some, that's a legal requirement. So it's important to look for platforms with a geographic reach and range that aligns with your needs. Okay, thank you. And uh, do we have any other comments, Shai? So our recommendation is that developers should look for fast vendors with DevOps tooling support um, minimum technology stack locking and rich integrations. So fast DevOps tooling can be challenging given that it, it is a relatively new and do not yet have a strong ecosystem, uh, tooling ecosystem uh, uh, by containers or uh, the legacy web application development. Therefore, we're using the existing tooling chains uh, such as IDE plugins, local debugging tools, CICD and monitoring services is very important. There is a high chance that containers and the serverless hybrid mode is common in many organizations and enterprises. And therefore, reusing existing tools for serverless development reduces the learning curve, confusion, and improves the time to market. The next recommendation is to minimize, minimize technology stack locking. For example, the same container image can be deployed to virtual, virtual machines, Kubernetes, and the FAST instead of writing a whole different set of tool, code and config uh, just for FAST. Reusing your observability tools such as monitoring, tracing, logging, and uh, events, and even third, uh, third party APM agents. And finally, FAST is by, uh, by its nature is to be used along with other cloud services such as handling events of object storage service, messaging, streaming, and IoT services. 
and even uh, third-party event, event source. Therefore, you would expect FAST to have many trigger triggering options to unlock more use cases. So put it together, we recommend to uh, look for tooling reusability to minimize technology locking and reach uh, event-driven integrations. So that is our three recommendations for developers when they're considering moving to FAST. Thank you for giving us this inspiring, inspiring talk about serverless. Thank you, Jeffrey Harman. Thank you, Shai Tang. Thank you. Thank you very much.